Hey everyone, Robson here from Coding Concepts, and in today's video, we'll be learning about the domain-driven design concept of value objects. If you find this content useful, please remember to like and subscribe as it will help us reach more people and be able to bring you more Coding Concept videos. Thanks for watching and let's get into it. A value object, as defined by Eric Evans in his book, Domain-Driven Design, Tackling Complexity in Software, is an object that represents a descriptive aspect of the domain with no conceptual identity. Value objects are instantiated to represent elements of the design that we care about only for what they are, not who or which they are. To help further understand what value objects are, we can break the concept down into four principles. They measure, quantify, or describe something in your domain. They are immutable. They maintain referential identity, but lack their own identity. And they provide side effect free functions. So let's take a look at the first principle. It measures, quantifies, or describes something in your domain. Oftentimes, when you're trying to measure or quantify something within your domain, you'll find that there is this common relationship of some measurement with a particular unit or scale. When you come across scenarios like these in your domain, they present great opportunities to use value objects to model them. Probably the best real world example of value objects is money. The simplest scenario to think about is your own personal bank account balance, which tracks two important things. The first and most obvious is the amount of money you have. But the second and perhaps less obvious is the currency that money is stored in. As we all know, not all currencies have the same value, so it's important to establish that relationship to correctly represent a bank account balance. Another good example is temperature. When we measure temperature, there are two required bits of information needed. The first is the total number of degrees, and the second is the scale used. We can describe this relationship by creating a temperature value object and encapsulate these two properties within that class to represent a measurement of temperature. The last example we'll look at is color. One way we could model color in our domain would be through the use of RGB values. By using these RGB values inside of a color value object, we can provide the calculation for new colors derived from those values. The second principle of value objects is that they are immutable. If we think about our bank account example and suppose we have a balance of a thousand US dollars, we can't just suddenly change the currency and decide to have a thousand euros. That just doesn't make sense because euros are currently worth more. The properties of value objects are related. They describe something. If you change one property, it completely changes the meaning of the object. This is why value objects are immutable. If you need to change a property of a value object, you need to destroy and recreate the entire object to ensure the integrity of the object remains intact. If we think about our temperature example again, we can't just change the scale of measurement without affecting the total number of degrees. This is why it's important to keep value objects immutable. 77 degrees Fahrenheit is obviously not the same as 77 degrees Celsius. If we want to move from Fahrenheit to Celsius, we would need to recreate the entire value object. This will maintain the relationship between the properties. The third principle of value objects is they maintain referential identity but lack their own identity. To take a closer look at this principle, let's consider two different car objects and take a look at the paint that was used for each of them. While observing the car objects, we can see that the paint buckets used for each car were different as indicated by the different paint bucket IDs. This is the identity of the paint bucket itself. However, even though the cars were painted using different paint buckets, we can still compare the two color value objects and determine that both cars are the same color. Even though they came from different paint buckets, the color is the same. This is referential identity. Let's look at another example. Say we want to determine if two different people have the same net worth. One way we could do this would be by looking at their bank account balances. Now if we think about the amount of money each person owns in their bank account, each person will have a collection of uniquely serialized currency that only they possess. That's the identity of the currency itself, specific to each person. But we can evaluate the bank account value object and determine if they have the same net worth using referential identity. 
In this case, because the bank account value objects are different, we can make the determination that these individuals do not have the same net worth. The last principle of value objects is that they must contain side effect free functions. If we stay with our bank account example and say we want to add a new withdrawal function to be able to take money out, and in addition, we also want to be able to perform logging each time that a withdrawal is performed, it might seem reasonable to put that logging inside of our newly created withdrawal function. However, the problem with that design is that it violates the principle of side effect free functions. Each time we perform a withdrawal, that function will be creating a side effect of performing application logging. It has the potential to write to a log file or even a database. To keep your function side effect free, remember to only be measuring or quantifying something within your value objects. Now let's recap the four principles of value objects again. The first is it measures, quantifies, or describes something within your domain. Remember to think about the relationships we established between properties inside of our value objects. If we think about our bank accounts, it's important to have both the total amount of money and the currency it's in. This is similar to how temperature works as well. You need to have both the total number of degrees and the scale used to take an accurate temperature. And lastly, think back to how we use the relationship between RGB values as the basis to create new colors. The second principle is they are immutable. Remember to think about the example of changing only the currency value of our bank accounts. You can't go from 1,000 US dollars to 1,000 euros. That just doesn't make sense. Each currency is valued differently. So when you need to make a change to a value object, remember to always destroy and recreate the entire object. The third principle is they maintain referential identity but lack their own identity. Think back to how we were able to determine that two cars were painted the same color even though they came from two different paint buckets. The identity of the two paint buckets were different, but by looking at their color value objects and determining that their referential identity was the same, it allowed us to say that both cars were painted the same color even though they were painted from two different paint buckets. The last principle is they must contain side effect free functions. Remember when we tried to perform logging inside of our withdraw function. That logging had the potential to write to a file or even a database, creating a side effect within our function. When you're designing your value objects, make sure your functions only measure or quantify something. Thanks for watching. I really hope you found some value inside this video, and if that's the case, please remember to like, share, and subscribe as it really helps us to continue to bring you more coding concept videos. Thanks again, and I'll see you soon.